Lord be with you. Also with you. Good evening. Good evening. Let's see, there's one other thing I'm supposed to say. Oh yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> it is a wonderful thing to be able to see you here tonight as we are gathered around God's Word and Sacrament, remembering the gift that God the Father gave us, the gift of His Son. And that is the best present you will ever receive. I'm also happy to see you all because for you are our regular members. If you're not aware, we have a number of people down with COVID or flu or in some cases both. So I'm happy to see you all here. And for those of you watching online because you have one of the bugs, you're simply avoiding the bugs, good evening and Merry Christmas to you all as well. I have no idea. When you see me doing this, I don't know which camera is on. So we don't, I just kind of hear, hello, hello. So that way everybody's covered. All right, so uh, a couple of announcements, and I'll make this quick. We have more important things to do. But uh, I do want to remind everyone that this Sunday, one service, 10 o'clock, we will have communion, but no Sunday school or Bible class. All right, so please, please don't come at 8, because I won't be here yet. And if you come at 1045, we'll be just about done. So please, come at 10 o'clock, one Sunday, one Sunday only, uh, one service uh, this Sunday. Then, I just want to explain a couple of things that we're doing here tonight. If you take out your bulletin, um, let's see if that's in there. Okay, so I guess the first thing to, that I need to point out to you is that, you know, during, you know, since COVID started, we've not been singing hymns during communion. But I thought since it's Christmas Eve, what we would do tonight is when you have completed communion, when I have said your sins are forgiven and all that stuff, when the elders are coming back to collect your empties, that is when we will sing the first Noel in a way in a manger. Okay? So after communion is over and the elders are doing the dishes, if you will, that is when we'll do the first Noel in a way in a manger. And then we'll have a prayer and then we're going to do the, you know, the candlelight thing uh, with Silent Night. And just a reminder, if your candle uh, is, is solid, it's not lit, then you can hold it this way. If your candle is lit, please do not hold it this way to light somebody else because you have hot wax that will spill. So uh, we always want to give that as a safety reminder, and of course we don't want the church to be you know, set on fire or something like that. And I think that is it in terms of announcements tonight. Is there a presentation this evening? Okay. Uh, anything else I'm forgetting, neglecting, or overlooking tonight? Okay, then we will begin our service tonight with the uh, introductory music from the bell choir, Ode to Joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my Son, today I have begotten you. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. 
who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Glory, Glory be to the, the Father, Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my Son. Today I have begotten you. We pray. O oh God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation will please stand for our first hymn, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Congregation may be seated. Our first reading tonight on this Christmas Eve comes from the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior and battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, 
to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading tonight is from Micah chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. This too is the word of the Lord. We continue by singing. third lesson tonight comes from Titus chapter 2 where we read for the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation for all people training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled upright and godly lives in the present age waiting for our blessed hope the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with our Christmas choir and our contribution to our service this evening.
So due to the length of the gospel reading tonight, you will remain seated during these readings. The Christmas Gospel, Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. We continue by singing. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. This is our gospel reading so far.
go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now stand and confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for our sermon here. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm going to start with a confession. This is a fun sermon to preach. I'm having fun. So one of the things I usually say to begin a sermon like this is how quickly it seems like it's been since the last time we were doing this. And if you're a younger person, you'd think, I don't know, it seems like it's been a long time since we had Christmas. Wait till you get older. 
Wait till you get older. Right, Merle? Right. Okay. So one of the things that I was taught in seminary was, you know, they didn't want us just to know the theology and the doctrine and the scriptures and the stuff that they teach in seminary. We were told, learn everything you can about everything. And so they told us, look, you need to, you know, uh, you know, get a news magazine and follow the news and the politics. So my professors would want me to know who Senator Manchin is, for example. And they, want you, they said, you need to know about the economy and what's going on there. And you need to know, you know, watch the TV shows that your people are watching. Go to the movies that your people are, are doing and, and whatever. So I try and read a lot of different things on a lot of different web websites to fulfill what I, was, what I was taught to do. And one of the things that I have seen repeatedly this year is a number of mental health experts and doctors saying that in this country and in many countries, they are having, we are having a mental health crisis. There are a lot of people who are facing depression way more than average. There are a lot more people committing suicide this, you know, uh, as we end this year than there normally are, that kind of thing. Because people are afraid. People have fears. And when I say fears, I'm not talking about things like claustrophobia or, you know, uh, fear of heights or fear of the number 13. I know somebody who's afraid of the number 13. We're talking things, um, you, know, uh, you know, things like a fear of war. Are we going to go to war with Russia? Are we going to go to war with China? Are we going to go to war with, with both? That sort of thing. There are people worried about the economy and inflation, since inflation is the highest it's been since the 1980s. And, of course, people are afraid of more COVID. And as I said earlier, as we gather tonight, we have a number of our members who have this week been diagnosed with COVID-19. And remember when that whole thing started in March of 2020? That's when it started here. I mean, it started earlier, obviously, around the world. But remember when that started here in March of uh, uh, 2020 and everyone said, ah, a couple of months, this will all be gone. Now here we are. People have fears. And one of the ways, as I've already mentioned, that this is revealing itself is that since COVID started, the suicide rates have been going up. And in one of the places I go on the internet, I found this article, and I started writing this sermon in October. And so two weeks ago, I ran across this. This was in the New York Times. And there is a website out there. The New York Times did not give the web address for reasons you'll understand. But there's a website out there where people can go on message boards and chat groups and find all the information they want on the best way to kill themselves. And according to the New York Times, they've identified 45 people who killed themselves in the US, United Kingdom, Italy, Canada, Australia, from using this website, there are another 500 members who have written goodbye threads on this website announcing that they were going to kill themselves and they never posted again. And this site no now draws 6 million page views a month on average. Now, I have to tell you that out of curiosity, I tried to find that website. It took me three minutes. But the New York Times didn't say what it was. But people are afraid. People have fears. And on top of that, then there are the holiday fears that we have to deal with, right? And I'm not talking about the fear of going to the tree tonight or tomorrow, whenever you go to your tree, and not finding that Christmas present that you really want, you know, that you're, the fear that you're not going to get the Red Ryder BB gun with the compass and the stock and the thing that tells time. For regular members, they know every Christmas Eve sermon I have ever preached, 31 of them now, I have made reference to that movie. That's my Christmas tradition. 
And of course, and I'm also not talking about the holiday fear of am I going to see enough of the Hallmark Christmas movies this month? Or did you get enough lights on your house so that they can see it from the International Space Station? I'm not talking about those kind of holiday fears. The holiday fears I am talking about include worrying about is dinner going to be perfect tomorrow? And my mother, God rest her soul, she worried about that every year. Is dinner going to be perfect? Or is the house going to be clean enough for your mother-in-law? Are you going to be able to pay the credit card bills? And a little more seriously, the Christmas fear, is everyone going to make nice at dinner tomorrow? Is everyone going to behave? Or is someone going to say the wrong thing or drink too much or something like that? Now we know that there are a lot of people with holiday fears. I mean, we know that depression rates are higher the, during the holiday season and that stress and anxiety are higher this time of year. So something I want to mention to you is if you are sitting here tonight and you have some of these fears that I'm talking about, these holiday fears are not new. They're not just with our generation at this time and this place in our culture. They go all the way back to the first Christmas because there were people involved in the original Christmas story who also had holiday fears. So let's start with the Magi, the wise men, the wise guys, I like to call them. They're on this long trip. They're heading for Jerusalem. And, you know, we don't know, you know, a lot about these Magi. So there's theories that they were astrologers. There were theories that they were astronomers. There were theories that they were just advisors to royalty. They were not kings. I know you've heard of that, you know, that carol, We Three Kings. Well, they weren't kings, and we don't know there were three of them. They had three gifts, but there may have been five of them. There may have been two of them. We just know there was more than one because the word magi, as it appears in the Greek, is plural. And if you're thinking, well, three, three gifts, there should be three of them. Well, how many times at the office have you chipped in on a gift for somebody and there were lots of people and like one or two gifts, right? So we don't know. But as they're making their way to Jerusalem, and they are going to Jerusalem because that is the capital city. They've seen the star. They believe a, a major king has been born. Uh, some usual things are going on. So they're going to Jerusalem because that is the capital there in, in that part of the world, and there's already a king there. His name is Herod, Herod the Great. And Herod was not great. Herod was bad. This was a guy who frequently killed people, including in his own family, if he thought they were any threat to his throne, his reign, or if he just simply didn't like them. He was not great. And if you know your Bible, you know that after the wise men showed up in Jerusalem and after they found Jesus in Bethlehem, and it, it wasn't this night, the night he was born. They came later, according to Matthew. They left because God said, get out of Dodge. But Herod the Great then killed every two-year-old and under in Bethlehem to try and get to Jesus. And of course, they had already left by then. But I'm assuming that these magi were smart enough to have heard of Herod the Great and to know what his reputation was. The Bible doesn't say this, but I've always kind of thought, kind of wondered, when they were going to Jerusalem, were they asking themselves, what kind of reaction is this Herod going to give us when we say we're looking for the new king? And I think they probably wondered, how is he going to react? And so they had their fear because they knew Herod could get mad and just kill them. But that didn't happen. He said, go find this child for me and then report back, which was because he said, I want to worship him. That was a lie. He wanted to kill him. So I think the wise men and the magi had fear that first Christmas. And then think about Joseph and Mary. They're on their way to Bethlehem from Nazareth, and I think they each had their fears because Joseph is thinking, I'm going to be the stepfather to God How's that going to work? So I'm assuming that he had his fears as he's going on this journey. He's got a donkey. He's got Mary on the, the donkey probably. And, and he's thinking, okay, we're going to have a, a kid, and we're not even married yet. They were just engaged. That's what Luke 2 says. They were engaged, not married yet, and that was quite the scandal. 
So Joseph has his fears. Mary has her fears. Like any first-time mother has fears. I remember a long time ago when Erica was pregnant with our oldest. He's you know, 19 now, but I still remember. That, you know, wondering how's this going to work? How much is it going to hurt? So I'm assuming Mary was thinking along those lines. And she's thinking, I'm going to be the mother of the Son of God. How's that going to work? You know? So I think she had her fears. And then we get to these shepherds. Have you figured out where I'm going with this yet? <laughs> then you got these shepherds. And they're out there in their fields, and it's probably cold, and it's dark, and they're bored, and they're trying not to fall asleep. And you have to understand that, that being a a shepherd was not a job that people went out and sought and went to school for and went, I want to be a shepherd. Sh shepherd is something you did if you couldn't find anything else. All right? I don't know anyone in my life that growing up as a kid, they said, you know what, I want to work for Roto-Rooter and I want to empty septic tanks for my entire career. You know? But that's the kind of job that they had. That's how people looked on it. And if anybody here has ever emptied a septic tank, God bless you, I'm not knocking your job, you know. But these shepherds are out there in the, the night, and, and suddenly this angel shows up. And the glory of the Lord is shining. And the Bible says, and they were, they were afraid. And I would have been afraid too if the glory of God showed up there in the middle of this night on this, what was supposed to be a routine night of trying to keep the sheep where they belong. They were afraid. But then what did that angel say? First thing, fear not. Don't be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, Bethlehem, the Savior, Christ the Lord. And the angel goes on to give the details. And this will be the sign. You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger of all places. And suddenly there was with that angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, and they're saying, glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, and I want to get the quote right here, glory, uh, peace among those with whom he is pleased. And I know that's not what you learned when you were a kid, but that's a better translation of the Greek than what's in the King James. And I know that you might hear that and go, trust me, that's a better translation. I've studied Greek. It's a better translation. And so what the, the shepherds heard that night is my message to you. Don't be afraid. When the shepherds heard that that night, they ran and they found, it, found the, the, the manger, the stable, just as the angel said. They worshipped, and then they left and they told everybody they saw, hey, you know what we saw? And people were like, well, those guys, what's wrong with them, you know? But everywhere those shepherds went, they're like, we've seen the Savior, we've seen the Son of God. They weren't afraid anymore because they know, they knew that night that God was with them. You know that word Emmanuel, God with us? They knew God was with them that night. And we know that too. And so I say to you tonight, fear not. Do not be afraid. And I don't know what you're dealing with tonight. I don't know how you're feeling as you gather here this evening. But I am here to tell you that on a night 2,000 years ago, our Heavenly Father gave us each the best gift we will ever receive. He gave us Himself. He gave us His Son. And this Son grew up, fulfilled the law perfectly, because we don't do that. We're sinners. We mess up. We do bad things, wrong things, evil things. We say bad things, wrong things, evil things. We think bad things, wrong things, evil things. We sin. Jesus never did that. He fulfilled the law perfectly in our place, took our punishment for our sins upon himself on a cross, died on Good Friday, and I've, I've got to mention Good Friday and Easter in this sermon, because if all we do is talk about baby. That's just the beginning of the story. We've got to make sure we get to the end. 
So Jesus died on a cross like that as the Lamb of God, the sacrifice for our sins. The, he took our punishment upon himself, and then on Easter Sunday, he rose again, winning for us the victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil. We've been given faith, forgiveness, and eternal life. We have those blessings, and those gifts are way better than anything that we're going to find under our trees tonight or tomorrow. It's better than a PlayStation, an Xbox, a Traeger grill, or keys to a new Kia a Stinger, or a, any Mercedes with an AMG engine, or you know what I mean. I always see those commercials, and I think, maybe this is the year Erica will buy me a $200,000 car. <laughs> I'm not holding my breath. But we have been given the best gift, the best present, because God has given us himself. So whatever you got going on, whatever you are dealing with as you are here in this room tonight, know this. Remember this. Because I know bad things are going to keep happening. I thought 2021 was better than 2020. I saw a headline on Drudge. See, I told you I read a lot of stuff. I saw a headline on Drudge yesterday that said most Americans think 2021 was worse. It was better for me because I didn't have three eye surgeries. But I don't know what's going to happen in 2022, but I know bad things are going to happen. But it doesn't, whatever happens, don't be afraid. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all you people. For unto you is born a Savior, Christ the Lord, this is God's gift to you. He has saved you. He has forgiven you. He loves you. He has promised to be with you now and forever until he comes to bring you home with him. So don't be afraid. Because this Jesus is your Savior. Merry Christmas. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, may keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We now stand for the prayers of our congregation. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy and gracious Lord, your Son became flesh with heart and hands to carry our sins to the cross. As we give thanks for your Son's incarnation, strengthen our faith with the remembrance that he is born to save us by his life, death, and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of comfort, you send an angel to reveal to Joseph that the child in Mary's womb was your own, preserving their marriage and family. Preserve our homes also by your word. Fill them with your grace that husbands and wives, parents and children may live in peace and love with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray tonight for all those who are sick, for all those diagnosed positive for viruses, for all those who have any fears. And we ask you to bring healing, comfort, and your present to, presence to all those who are suffering. Lord, in your, in, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, you love us and sent your Son to be the solution for our sins. Strengthen us to love one another. As you have mercy upon all who are poor and troubled, so perfect your love in us that we would be gladly be your instruments of help in time of need. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, in the manger, despite appearances, we find Emmanuel, God with us, to deliver us from sin. Open our eyes by faith to find this same Savior with us in the sacrament of the altar for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Father, you've given your Son, born of Mary, to be the Savior of the world. Send your Spirit and abide with us that we might confess that Jesus is the Savior of the world and abide in your love until he comes again in glory. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You may be seated for our distribution. Take and eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus given on the cross for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus give you comfort and give you strength. Go in peace with joy knowing there's no need to be afraid. 
because Jesus died for you, he rose for you, and your sins are forgiven. Amen. We now sing the first note.
we pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled to serve you constantly. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, so you will remain standing, get out your candles. We will have a couple of elders come down the middle of the aisle to get you guys uh, lit up. Please make sure you only tip your candle if it is not lit. And then we will play a little silent night for you. And then when I start singing, you start singing with me.
Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Okay, you may extinguish your candles. We'll bring up the lights and sing our concluding hymn, Joy to the World. Christmas. Christmas. Now before we go, I would like to thank all of our musicians who took part here tonight, all of our bells players, the folks in the choir, everybody who helped set up and arrange things. Let's give everybody a round of applause for all of their <laughs> hard work tonight. So God be with you and bless you as you celebrate the, the birth of our Lord. May you have a blessed, happy, and healthy weekend. Don't forget 10 o'clock only Sunday morning. Uh, God bless again and one more time, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Come on.